Hi, Sunday, April 4th, Easter. It has me thinking about expectations. <clears throat> you know, people expected <clears throat> that when Jesus came, he would be a king, that he would free the Jewish people from the oppression of Rome. <clears throat> when he rode in on that donkey on Palm Sunday and they were, you know, throwing down their coats and the palms and all that, that's what they were expecting. They thought that there was going to be some sort of, um, you know, insurrection or that he was going to free them. And they were disappointed because that's not what they expected. They expected a savior that would save them from earthly things. And uh, I've done that. I've expected a savior that would save me from earthly things. I've expected a savior that would provide um, for me the things that, as an American, I started to consider were my right, you know? Um, and <clears throat> that's not why he came. He came to provide me with 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 a, a heavenly heavenly provision because I can never be you know this is what the gospel is you know people talk about it all the time the gospel this the gospel that no all it it's very simple the gospel is that no matter what I do no matter how hard I try to be good no matter how hard I try not to sin or act on my character defects. I'm never going to be good enough to be in the presence of a holy God. I'm just not. I can't be. It's my sin nature, my human nature. But because <clears throat> Jesus came here from heaven, he was in heaven for all eternity. He chose to come here. He chose to be rejected. He chose to be despised. And I'm not just talking about when he... When they crucified him, I'm talking about like the whole time he was here, people rejected him. People despised him. He went to his hometown and they told him, aren't you that carpenter's son? Get out of here. You know, these people have been waiting for their savior for generations. And then when he came, because he wasn't what they expected, right? They expected a king wearing robes and fine jewelry. And he was a humble man. He probably had one robe the whole time. In his adult life. You know maybe one tunic. One pair of sandals. He didn't have a palace. He traveled. Like I'm traveling. He slept you know outdoors. Like I'm sleeping outdoors. And his followers. You know. Some of them didn't. You know they started out good. And then they left. He said, the rich young ruler said to him, what must I do to be saved? And he said, sell all you have and give the money to the poor and come follow me. And not everyone is called to do that. But the reason why he called that guy to do it is because that were, those were his idols. Those were the things that stood between him and truly following God, his riches. We all have idols in our lives. I know I do, you know, and I definitely think that. Um, comfort is one of my big idols. I chose to be comfort, comfortable rather than to follow Jesus, you know? <clears throat> and um, <laughs> so you guys know all this stripping away, you know, it's, I know it's hard to watch. And if you are watching, I thank you for watching because I'm doing this for a reason, you know? I want people to know that there is hope no matter what the circumstance is that we can um that we can derive our strength from a holy God that his words are true um and that you know ultimately this place is not my home you know so sometimes when I feel sad and I do I feel very sad that I live in a world where I have to fight to breathe, really, that it's so toxic here that I can't breathe if I go around humans and I have to, 
sequester myself in nature in order to breathe. But isn't that a gift though? I love nature. I've always loved nature. So I'm doing the best I can. I, I don't know how else to say it. I'm just going to keep it really simple. I have food. I have water. I have a place to sleep. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. That's, that's all I can say, you know? And, uh, I hope you guys all have a nice day and, uh, I will uh, see you tomorrow.